Grace and peace to you this wonderful morning as we gather for worship with the community friends of Holy Redeemer Lutheran Church. We're ever grateful for our worship team. We give thanks for Tracy and Jack and Jackie and Lanny, Jeff who prepares our materials week by week. And we celebrate with the flowers uh, behind the altar in honor of Brian and his baptismal anniversary. So we wish him a happy baptismal anniversary today. Um, after worship today, around 10.15, there will be the budget roundtables. And so if you're able to gather by Zoom, please Zoom in at that link at that time. And the executive committee will lead you through that process. There will be also another roundtable next Sunday, and uh, we ask you to gather that way. We will have special arrangements for those who do not have internet to gather with us if they would like here for the roundtable. We pray today for those who are grieving, especially those who lost loved ones over the Christmas and New Year's holidays. And we pray for all in our nation's capital impacted by the attack on the members of Congress their staff, and journalists. And we pray for those who lost their lives, especially we pray for Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who was assaulted by the rioters. We pray for our elected leaders, our ELCA clergy and ministers of the DC congregations, and all who are seeking to bring about peace and justice in this very difficult situation. We remember our congregations through our community here in Cedar Rapids and the greater area. We remember those who have been recently diagnosed with COVID-19. Our friend of our family, Gloria, received good news yesterday. She was moved from the ICU from uh, University of Iowa Hospital to a regular room, and so she is making um, steady steps to her recovery. We pray for those recovering at home, and it seems to me, as people tell me news as I see you or hear from you, that every family has been touched by somebody who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. So we wrap our arms in prayer around all of you. We pray for students and families and teachers who have returned to classes, whether online or in person. And in the midst of our prayers, where some are grieving, we celebrate with those who have anniversaries or birthdays this week, birthdays for Sam and Peggy. With these words of welcome and announcement, we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the spirit of reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. We gather our voices to sing out, we are called, ELW 720.
and peace to God's people on earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of life and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. This familiar story was good news for the Israelites, who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. The first reading is from the first chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 29 will be spoken alternately. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to, to the Lord, Lord the glory to God's, God's name. name. Worship, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord burst forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received John's baptism of repentance, but had never heard of the Holy Spirit or of baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with the gifts of the Spirit. The second reading is from the 19th chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Lord of the God, or the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. as we journey together 
It is the season of Epiphany and the Festival of Lights. Into this light of Christmas and Epiphany, let us pray. Merciful God, God of all grace and all compassion, we huddle together this morning seeking solace in your word, yearning for the peace that passes all human understanding in a world that is filled with misunderstanding, confusion, and chaos. Surround us with your ever-present love as we draw near to you, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. John the baptizer is a wilderness kind of God, rough and ready. Mark reminds us that John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. There he was, rough around the edges, but not crazy because people from the whole Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem were going out to him to be baptized in the River Jordan as they confessed their sins. And all the while, John tells them about this one who is coming, his cousin. And John shouts, the one who is coming is more powerful than I. That one is coming after me. John mentions that he wouldn't even feel worthy to bow down to take this one's sandals from his feet, as a house servant would do for a guest. Instead of the dreams and angels of Matthew's story about the birth of Jesus, or the shepherds and the angels in Luke's birth story, Mark begins this way, with the baptism of Jesus as a way to make it clear to all who hear and all who would read that this one, the special anointed one of God is the one who has come, and his name is Jesus. When Mark describes the baptism of Jesus, it's a very profound act that he has in mind. Mark writes that Jesus was coming out of the water, and he saw the heavens torn apart and a dove descending, broken, open, torn apart. This Greek word for torn apart is schizo, and it means to cleave, to cleave asunder, to rend. It's a strangely intense word to describe what we usually associate as a very happy occasion, baptism. The way we tend to talk about baptism, how some artists and maybe Sunday school lessons depict baptism with their sweet paintings and cartoons, it would seem as if Mark was merely talking about a lovely dove cooing gently or perhaps fluttering over the surface of the water, but that's not how Mark describes it, not at all. Pastor Maxwell Grant ponders the baptism of Jesus in this way. Instead, Mark talks about the heavens, schizo, torn apart. It's the word Matthew, Luke, and Mark used to describe that moment on Good Friday when the curtain of the temple is torn in two, schism. It's the word John uses when the Roman soldiers are at the foot of the cross and determined not to tear Jesus' garment and divide it between them, but they cast lots for it instead. It's a word with resonances in the prophecies of Isaiah, particularly when Isaiah says to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Mark understands very clearly in Jesus, this is exactly what has happened. God has torn the heavens and come down. Pastor Max says that the heavens were torn open so that, so that the very presence of God could be realized and experienced. And so it is. That Mark sets the stage for the story of Jesus Jesus as the one who is on his unrelenting journey to the cross in Jerusalem. After all, throughout the centuries, the church has always understood that baptism was very serious business, as we are buried with Christ in a death like his, so that we will be raised up in a new life like his. So too, we are joined together, all the baptized, you and I, in the body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So, Jesus 
joins John in the wilderness in his rough and gritty way of life near the River Jordan. And Jesus descends into the water and rises up water washed. Through the fracture in the heavens, the Spirit of God descends like a dove. And through the fracture, the voice speaks the words that announce the identity of the one for whom John has waited. You are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. According to Mark, the baptism of Jesus is clearly a radically profound event. In Jesus, God breaks open the world to the very love and the power of God in Jesus, the Christ. And Mark wants the entire world to know. And yet, sometimes, and just maybe, we lose sight of the very profound meaning of our own baptisms. Because if we just stop and pause for a moment to meditate and ponder our baptisms seriously, our baptisms might just break open our own lives too. On Wednesday, the Feast of the Epiphany, our sensibilities were fractured, broken open, torn apart by the news that there was an attack on the United States Capitol. And upon all the Congress people, the senators, our vice president, the vice president-elect, journalists, and the many staff, and some family members who were with them, hundreds of our fellow citizens, some of them armed, rampaged, and violently stormed their way past the Capitol Police, destroying property, terrorizing frightened people. Five people died. Some of the frightened ones began phoning or texting their loved ones to say, I love you, in the event that they might be killed. Not since 1812 has this happened in our beloved capital, and the events and the images have torn asunder our notions of safety and security in that very hallowed place. Many were stunned, simply stunned, at the horror and the spectacle. Maybe you were stunned too. I know that I was. Emotions and feelings are all a jumble for many, if not all, Americans, and well, truth be told, a jumble for our friends in countries throughout the world. Our thoughts might sway back and forth, to and fro, from sadness to confusion, anger to despair, weariness to active prayers, to frustration and worry and back again. Words fail. There is nothing to say. And then there's a lot to say. And then there are the endless prayers to be prayed and prayed and prayed. Some of our fellow citizens seem to believe that they are more beloved than others in our nation. And these ideas give them cause to force their notions upon others and seemingly somehow forget that, according to our founders, that all are endowed with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that all men and women are created equal in God's sight. There's a beautiful Japanese art practice that brings light and hope to our broken things today. The Japanese practice is called kintsugi, the art of precious scars. This traditional Japanese art uses a very precious metal, sometimes liquid gold, sometimes liquid silver, and it's brought together when there's a broken piece of pottery, mending it all back together, all the fractures with the gold or the silver until it is whole once again. The kintsugi technique suggests many things. We shouldn't throw away broken objects. When an object breaks, it doesn't mean it's no longer useful. Its breakages can become beautiful, transformed with gold, fashioning it back together. Kintsugi works to repair things. Kintsugi is the essence of resilience, and each of us should look for a way to cope with traumatic events in a positive way. We learn from negative experiences, take the best from them, and convince ourselves that exactly these experiences make each person unique and precious. In our Christian faith, this is the holy work of forgiveness and reconciliation. For God pours the golden love of Christ into each one of us, into our fractures, into our broken bits, fashioning each one of us into a new creation. The fractures 
fears and brokenness between others is profound. We are wounded and worn out. We are worried and weary from the splinters of our own lives over health concerns, grieving over the death of loved ones, job loss, and the list goes on. But the promises of God are sure and true. Out of the torn places where our sensibilities are rent asunder, the grace and love of God descend upon each one of us, resting like a dove, and a voice breaks through it all. You are my beloved. You are my beloved ones. You, each one of you, is beloved, cherished, and precious in God's sight. And that is the good and holy news we, each one of us, is compelled to share wherever and whenever we go. Whenever we find ourselves amidst the angry, hurting, and broken people around us. As we have been loved and blessed, so too we are sent to love and bless the world with all of its dents and tears and fractures. At our baptisms and our affirmations of baptism, promises are made as we respond to these questions. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, to which we, the beloved ones of God, reply, we do, and we ask God to help us. Water washed, blessed, and loved, walking wet, Let's go out to the torn places and pour out the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. Light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Amen. On this Sunday of the baptism of our Lord, let us offer our prayers for all in need. Responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Give us your blessings of peace. For the worldwide church, for those who minister in the church, for all who will be baptized this year, and for their godparents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will empower all the faithful for lives of service. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that God provide clean and nourishing water for all living things. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for international efforts to prevent war and reduce violence, for the armed forces, for people, police officers, and for peacemakers, ambassadors, and diplomats, that God inspire all people to work for the harmonious well-being of others. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give your blessings of peace. For students, for teachers, and school administrators, for parents assisting their children in homeschooling, and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation, that as the academic year resumes, God give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely, and for those we name here, Deborah, Cheryl, Erin, Becky, Danita, Rob, John, Leona, Tracy, Tammy, Marvin, James, Kim, Dennis, Mark, Corey, Shannon, Helen, Jacob, Joy, Robert, Marcia, Sarah, Diane, Rachel, Pat, Ian, Rhonda Lee, Gary, Susan, and Max. That God grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For ourselves, that we rejoice in our adoption as members of God's family. And that now, in this silence, we bring to God our heart's request. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. 
in gratitude for our beloved dead, especially those who died in 2020. We offer our praise for all the baptized who have accompanied, accompanied us and supported us and taught us throughout our days, that at our end we join with them in everlasting joy. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us, give us your, your blessings, blessings and peace. On this Sunday, the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, we remember all in their baptismal anniversaries, especially on this day, we remember Brian and celebrate with him. Empower us to all celebrate and embrace the power of our baptism, that we are washed and loved, set free and sent into the world. We pray especially today for all impacted by the attack on the Capitol. We remember and pray for those who died, for those who grieved them, especially we remember the family and friends of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. Be with our leaders as they strive for justice and reconciliation and to bring peace in this troubled time. Almighty and most merciful God, you are the mighty voice from heaven. You are our beloved Savior. You are the descending dove. We give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies. And we ask you to accept our prayers for the sake of your mercy today and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We send ourselves out singing the Church of Christ in every age. It is ELW 729. Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, 
heal the sick, and receive the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word, that if held by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, reveling in the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. We send our blessings with you. Again, we miss you so very much. Uh, we look forward to those who are able to Zoom today, and we will see you then. Um, until we meet again, we are blessed with the beautiful music by Jackie as she plays her postlude today. <laughs>